let's begin. Hey everybody, welcome to Grand Blue Radio. Um, as promised, we're we're continuing to break down all of the things that were announced at um, Grand Blue Fantasy Fest that are just actually coming out now. And it's like, you know, we could have talked about them a week ago and it's taken an hour, or we could just talk about them now that they're out. So yeah. <laughs> hey DJ, uh, how bad is the uh, the jet lag situation for you still? Like, uh, give me numbers. I'll sleep for another three hours. <laughs> in the middle of the day. That's wow. Okay. All right. Well, happy new year everybody. It's 2024 in Japanese reckoning it's the year of the dragon. For those of us who are, you know, Vietnamese and Chinese and stuff like that. It's not quite the year of the dragon yet, but it's all good. Yeah, it comes out that's like uh next month, right? It's the next lunar month. Yeah. Yeah. But it's all good. Um We've got a lot of uh, stuff to go through today, so DJ, let's get to it. What do you want to talk yep. about? There were there were six releases that we should talk about first, and then we can talk about like speculative stuff that happens tonight. What was the six things? Hold on. Uh, two evokers, one summon, three characters. Oh yeah, summon came out. That's why. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I was able to get one of them at the last thirty rolls. Phew! The, that bullet dodged, as opposed to like Nakamura casually going nine hundred deep or something like that. It was well, he didn't have to go nine hundred this year. Last year he went nine hundred for uh, Yadima. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, Raid up did not exist for me. Oof! Big oof! So. Where do you want to start though, DJ? There's a there's there's so many. Like who have you tested the most so far? Oh, Tira. Oh, let's talk about Tira then. My Tira beautiful... was like the, the only character I got that was immediate. All right, so let's talk about Tira because this character is sick. Uh, also, sorry, she's super cool. Source Tira. Um, in fact, probably. Yeah, uh, is she melee? I think she's melee, right? Yeah, she's melee. She's melee. She has a dinosaur. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. The dinosaur that uh, comes with her is an axe. Yeah, but you hold that, and also it's a toy dinosaur. <laughs> Sometimes Grand Blue Fantasy uh, intentionally defies logic just to keep you on your toes, man. <laughs> hey, this one makes sense. You grab a funny tail and head, smack it over the head. I mean, that's fair. So here's Tira. Uh, both of us are big fans of this character, as I recall. Like, I'm, I've been a fan of her since last year. Daryl, our friend uh, and crewmate, <laughs> by definition, this character was made to appeal to him in particular. Thank you, dinosaur. But uh, you remember what I always say about dark characters? Uh, here's your multi-attack. And your chaser. So she's not beating these allegations. <laughs> well, the chaser, I don't think is part of this but it's it's, it's close. part of tail stomp and it's part uh, of tail stomp it's one there it's one of the buffs you can get yeah all right <laughs> so anyway let's uh let's go over this so she's got a super cool dinosaur she's one of my favorite sprites in the game um then after that uh we just talk about like she has an olivia style thing where it's like put on this buff don't get hit and you're a god during this time. So during the evolution, she, what, is it just guaranteed triple attack? It's guaranteed triple attack, two hit flurry, mm -hmm. damage skills to activate twice, and buffs can't be removed. Yeah, so don't get hit three times. Does it take individual damage instances or turns of taking damage? Uh, I just assume it's always turns. Yeah. Um, But, like, because of this thing existing... um. Four fights that are exactly three turns long, which is honestly a lot of them for Dark, <laughs> because you just Dark poops out damage like crazy. Uh, while she has the evolution on, she is actually very, very close in power to uh, six. The the issue is once it's down, then you know six takes over because six's specialty is consistency and invincibility, but. Uh, that's fine, Vegel's here. Yeah, like this is this is powerful. Like Tira's Tira's like uh, buff. If you can keep it on any longer than just the evolution, uh, 
the the base three turns, it's worth it. Um, what do what do you want to talk about otherwhere? Uh, like where do you want to go next with this? Because yeah. So uh, things to know is that when you're so your yeah, nukes cast twice when you're in uh, the evolution. Mm -hmm. uh, Tail stomp apparently. Uh, if it's activated, if it's activated while Rage of Tyrant was activated, you get all the buffs. You just play and get them all at once, yeah. Yeah, instead of so, instead of it, uh, randomly cho choosing two twice. Yeah, so she gets supplemental, which six gets on his skill one. Uh, yeah, she gets okay. she gets crit, she gets chaser. That's a seventy percent ch uh, chance of getting thirty percent crit. Uh, Not... Chaser's fifty percent. Yeah, and then she has dodge and counter. Um, That's pretty good. It's pretty good. And then she double dispels. She gets double attack down. Uh, sorry, defense down stackable. Uh, dark defense down specifically. Mm -hmm. So that means it stacks with. Does Fediel have that one? I want to say. Uh, Fediel skill 2 does. Yeah, so uh, that one will stack up with Fediel's. Got it. Also, if she CAs, uh, she just reduces her skill cooldowns. And it does a little bit of white damage for the hell of it. Yeah, not a not a million, just one off. Yeah, nine 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 nine. Um, also, uh, beware of the dino. Uh, yeah. If the foe C uh, CA uh, Tyrannosaurus activates. Yeah, so she's so... Sec she's secretly Cassius under that dinosaur hoodie. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Uh, then, so he, no, Cassius doesn't reactively do it. He just gets a school. He gets school a off. Basically, it's it's close to the same. There there's, are a few things that a, change. There, there's a lot of difference, especially when you get paralyzed. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, and then yeah, uh, she. By the way, she has a passive just called "Look at my babies," which is attack and CA damage based on how many main allies there are. It's so. perpetuity attack, by the way. It's thirty mm -hmm. percent at the, at uh, having four main allies. Yeah. So, uh, strong baby. Very strong dinosaur baby. <laughs> she deserves it. She deserves the world, DJ. She's very good. Uh, what a what a what a fun character concept. But also, do you, is there a position for her that doesn't just plain cover everything else on the screen? Uh, I never tested that. <laughs> because she is huge. <laughs> like I. I guess a second, at least there's people in the foreground in front of her. <laughs> yeah, your MC doesn't exist. Yeah, just just make yourself a railbird. Nothing changes. This <laughs> is fair enough. <laughs> uh, all right, so that's Tira. Uh, good job, baby girl. Um, well, who's next? Uh, well, there's two limited. So one uh, always going to be here. The other one's only here for the year. All you right. Choose. Uh, because I already had melee selected, we're going over to Uriel next. So, um, the cycle. Yeah, of... yeah. we, we need to wait three more years for uh, Dragon to get melee. If she ever does, because, you know, the whole point of her is that she doesn't like doing things herself. Anyway, so here's Uriel. Um, he's the third out of the four Primarchs. And so, Michael cares about CAs, Gabriel cares about triple attacks. And now we have Uriel. Uriel cares about skills with red borders. Man, that's so hard in Earth. It's so difficult in Earth. If only there was a I very just... strong free uh, character, free to play character. That caught the Emery likes. Uh, well, uh, there's also that one, yeah, who lowers your skill red skill cooldowns. There's another free to play character from the other faction uh, that's uh, also made of three red skills. That reset on her CA. Well, one of them does. So, Threo. So, you know, some some very good choices here. But yeah, let's go take a look at Orichalcos. When an Earth ally casts a damage skill, then Uri gain, Uriel gains one Orichalcos. Up to nine. And um, when he normal attacks, just like with uh, Gabriel, then he eats three Orichalcos when possible to activate Upheaval. So upheavals up here, um, it does the magical words amplify damage taken, the wide, what used to be known as wide open. So the person after Uriel gets to go to town. Yeah, you don't want him last. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, keeping all of that in mind, 
Uh, he still got the Primarch passive of 20% to your summon skills. Summon boosted ones. Earth, Mountain, Terra for Titan side and Life Tree for Yggdrasil side. Um, and then he gets to double strike once every, well, 12 turns, but there's an asterisk on that one. Uh, he gets to triple dispel when he hits a real pile driver. And then uh, he will triple attack twice, and that means that he will most likely be Orichalcosing twice, which means that... Uh, He's boosting himself. Yeah. At least one of those times. <laughs> he yeah. actually amps himself, yeah. And then, you know, he's got the uh, the Primarch shield, which is um, give everybody a shield, that's a buff that goes away when you take damage three times. Uh, this one, instead of capping damage, uh, actually, it still he, caps he damage. Give, it does he cap damage. Shield, does he? he does not give it. I, I call it a shield just because it's called ward. Yeah, that's not that's not the right term for this though. Yeah, that's true. It's called it's the ward, so it caps the water damage you take. Uh, which you know does great things with characters like Arulamea and Kaim and all, a lot of characters like that. It doesn't do much to Thrao because Thrao already caps it at a lower number, but it's fine. Um, you do attack and skill specs up, so. What are the numbers on those? Uh, 30% for Verduity, 40% yep. skill damage, 20% damage skill damage cap. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, you also happen to get Chaser while this effect is up as well. Yep, 20%. And then, yeah, then his CA is, he, gets, he gives Earth Attack, which is made to um, help the Disciple passive, really, uh, the Alexial one. Um, he always, he gains three Orihelkos when he does this, so he will always have, uh, like, st a stock of Orihelkos when you need it. And then, you know, here's the little asterisk, he gets a two-turn cut to Uriel Pile Driver. And the numbers on these things are pretty big as well. Like, Upheaval has, what, two hits of, is it base a milio? Uh, one million, twenty thousand. Yeah. And then Pile Driver, uh has a 2 million cap naturally, so that thing will just hit like a freaking freight train. A lot of these numbers we're used to from Alethea at this point. Oh man, that's right, Alethea works with this guy. Yeah, Alethea has, it has uh, nukes, nuke buttons. And that reset, yeah. Alright, so... You know, in case you were having a hard time get in getting those uh, n uh, numbers done in your, in your hexos. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um, Uriel is a very easy, like, Primark uh, to be able to slot in, and he just works. Like, there is, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. As long as you're not playing, like, an all-yellow skill team or something like that, then he just works. Even then, he, like, he affects he, himself. Even then, he, he, he has three red buttons on his own, and C CA also fills them. Yeah. <laughs> He and will... you, can't even, you can't even argue about a CA team because he he uh, he he double strikes at one point. Mm -hmm. He'll not CA for that. Yeah, this character takes care of himself, and he take. Did you watch his uh, fate episodes? By the way, they're some oh. of my favorites in a while. Like Gabriel's was a little weird, but Uriel's is awesome. I love this guy. <laughs> it is actually a its own mini event, and that mini event is basically like a cooking manga kind of thing so shokugeki no soma when it actually is about cooking and like yakitate japan and stuff like that it's just it's really fun stuff so yeah big beefy men big big yeah yeah big manly uh, big meaty men cooking meat all right next up we got the dragon the dragon is staff only so and also like five foot something. Yeah, she's five foot one, which is the tallest uh, draft who is not Fediel or Ladiva. There, that has to come with it as its own division. Like the Fediel and Ladiva are both special. Yeah. All right. So here's Paila. Um, did you listen to her much? Because I know that you're a Takahashi Rie guy for some no. things at least. Okay. Uh, I I watched the Fate episode where uh, about about the swords. That's fair. Uh, By the way, I do not. I do not have a. 
You do not have her? No, I don't have a sword right now. You 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 have to remove that. What was that? Oh. Sorry, let me uh do that. How do you not have a sword? I thought you had Because I'm not logged in. Ah Alright, let me go ahead and ban this. Alright, there we go. So uh anyway yeah double strike's pretty cool <laughs> so you know um there's there's essays to write about this because her skills are uh so involved but basically double strike is pretty cool is how uh how you put this one yeah like we've talked a lot about how um water mana diver gets the privilege of holding a falsehood main hand and then just doing over trance things and now it's like all right so now you can double strike on turn one also, and then on turns four through, like, however long it goes through. So we start with, um, God, there's so many places to start. All right. This is the thing that uh, stands out the most about her, though, is Queen of Dragons. So she has two demerits. She has oh, Yeah, demerits. She has no charge bar gain when she, uh, when she attacks. It's like, okay, sure. Uh, we're used to that one by now. She has low max HP, which can be a significant drawback. Um, I have not it's tried only, her. It's, in only tw it's, it's only twenty percent uh, hit, so it's not that bad to compare to the others. Mm -hmm. um, but in exchange, she has all of these things. She has attack up, fifty percent for fertility. She has defense up, one hundred fifty percent. She has amplify normal attacks. Uh, thirty percent on the seraphic modifier. She always triple attacks. Yeah. And whenever she is uh, granted the double strike, triple strike, or quad strike, we'll talk about this in a second. <laughs> then she um gets assassin on any on anything past the first attack. So the first three attacks will be merely amplified. Then the second uh set of attacks will be um assassin and amp they will be uncapped and amp and if she gets the triple strike or quad strike then yeah and then what she cares about is for the horde over here uh props to the localization team on this one uh whenever any water ally attacks using double strike or higher then she hey, gains she's a water ally yeah then she gains the troves luster uh and she gets meter from that that's how she gains her meter. Um, and then the Tro's Luster, she gets a maximum of five. It matters for Sleeping Talent up here. Yeah, it only matters for that. Yeah. It's just for that. So on turn one, she will hit um, nothing ventured, done, nothing gained Cloud Walk. So nothing ventured, nothing gained is on turn one, she subs all. She also uh, dodges all. Dodges all. So as long as the as the the bosses have true sight mm -hmm. or god sight, uh, she won't die. And then double strike effect to all other water allies. Um, and then everybody else will double strike. She that will gain sixty meters. She will gain three um, troves lusters. And then she'll shoot lightning bolts. And what does the lightning bolt shooting do? Well. Uh, it gives one Thunderstruck because, I mean, yeah, sure. It deals. She, she, re she really zapped Makura in that episode. She did. Makura honestly deserved it. Anyway, <laughs> it's 10 hits of water uh, damage. I, on average, see it hitting for about a million each. So it's like 15 million. Um, uh, the damage cap is 185k per hit. Yeah. And then. Based on the number of Troves Lusters she has, she gets either Double Strike, Triple Strike, or Quad Strike. At so for 1 and 2, you get Double Strike, 3 and 4, Triple Strike, and 5 is Quad. Yeah. And so she cannot hit this on turn 1. Because, because you need she... to have at least one Trove Luster. Mm -hmm. And so under these circumstances where she gave everybody else Double Strike, and then they Double Strike, you, she should have 3. So she will triple strike on turn two. Unless you're holding this button for whatever reason. So you do I that. Think I think triple strike's pretty good. Yeah. 
Then, once you actually get to her CA, because the triple strike will get her to full meter, uh, after she gets the, you know, that 20 meter from the previous uh, three double strikes, so she's got plus 60 over to 90, then her CA has a higher cap than most unworldly, so it's a 3 million cap instead of, I think it's a 2 point something is what we're used to. Her is 2.9 million. Yeah. Um, she gets a two turn cut to her skills, which, you know, yeah, her, her skills are pretty long. Her skills are very long. She gets double strike the next turn, so she will give herself another of those Tro's Lusters that she'll need to uh, be able to cast Sleeping Talent again. And, you know, this one's probably fair. She CA seals herself, so that you don't just... She seals cannot these. be removed. Uh, yeah. Do we have a re uh, reduction in water? We do, but it's not on characters that you would really want <laughs> with Pai uh, with Paila, because I think it's on like Sophia. Sophia cannot. It will also get CA locked as well. Wait, no, she removes debuffs. Who reduces? Who reduces? I don't remember. Is it Juliet? Yeah. Who's good, but. Not in the same ways. Does Julia... There it is. Hey, Juliet. Hey, no, is... Hey, Julia, Julia gives a chaser. Juliet uh, is based on her having three crests or more at the end of a fight. Uh, at the end of a turn. So, that's how you can do it if you want. But then you meet. You uh, need to she, keep giving that, her crests. That, that shouldn't be too hard if you're playing Lana Diver. She eats a lot of them though. Yeah, you only need it once. Yeah, that's fair. Oh yeah, yeah you're, Risa you're, you're, in you're, chat you're, reminds us that uh, Diantha has it on her CA. Yo, let's go. We, you know what? Diantha has Chaser on CA. <laughs> <laughs> this, this entire kit is so stacked and works with so many different things that Water already is doing. Uh, so, you know, she works with, say, Vajra. Vajra feeds her meter uh, by just having double strike on for like four turns at a time or something like that. And, you know, um, they just, let's see, what's this Cloudwalk do again? Oh, we didn't even look at what Cloudwalk did. <laughs> it's very good. Amp, uh, amped normal tip, attacks. 10% so. normal amp, uh, 2,000 drain, 2,000 damage mitigation, buffs can't be removed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, um, she does great work with any of the, like, triple attack twins with uh, Poseidon, Gabriel... Um, Zeta, like, just any two of the characters who just care about triple attacking or just do triple attacking really well. Um, Gabe, like, I already said Gabriel, but, like, Here's Yukata Anilia. Anilia, um, you know, uh, Hosalia just multiplies her, uh, moon lasers by, uh, having characters but attack more often. Yeah, so it's like, everything that is good in water, she enhances. There is, there is, uh... Th and she's, an all, she's also an all-sub. Yeah. Because why not? Yeah. I'm giving her... I forgot uh, to give uh, her an uh, earring. Uh, uh, all-sub all, all with, uh, with fake bullions is pretty good. Yeah. There's there's a lot going on here. And uh, I've only used her for, um, like, farm-level content so far. I, I, I still need to figure out how to use her for something like Hexa, because... Um, I haven't been able to get her uh, Trove's Luster to get the hit the magical 2 million number for Hexa. So it's like, mm. and so, like, she also... I don't does... think you're going to get it. To... Are you talking about Sleeping Talent? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get that. Yeah. It's, and that's... The, the, the cap is 185. You need a higher cap to work yeah. with. Yeah. Um... It doesn't matter. Your 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 CA is beefy. Your 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 amplifying normal attacks, which is really good already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think she's just not designed for Hexa. She's designed for everything else. Like the only thing. You no, know, that... not ev not everything needs to be Hexa. Yeah, I'm just thinking about it from like that perspective as the hardest. Like I can bring her to 
pretty much anything else and it'll be fine. <laughs> I'd... And we'll see what happens with Lucy in a, um, a month with the Lucy V2. But uh, yeah, they, they, they wilded it out to make sure that she was good. Don't the autos break too many easily enough? I mean, yeah. <laughs> the... Yeah, I think Ryan's right, right because because of the uh, because of the 100% sharp attack of assassin that lasts the entire turn. Mm -hmm. Af uh, After I think, you'll, I think you'll be fine. The long cooldowns make me wonder about how things will work out because, like, with all of that attacking, Hase is going to trigger the skill uh, thing a lot, and then you're gonna. I have to figure out, like I said, I have to figure out the rhythm of it. Like right now, I have two very different Hexa teams. The, uh, and they play very differently. Like the um, there's the Halloween Vicala with dog version, and then the uh, Poseidon Shalem version over here. And so uh, both of those play very differently. And so I have to fi figure out another shell because you know the Poseidon version doesn't care about debuffs. Paella do is still like she doesn't do anything about debuffs. For example, it's one of the only things she doesn't do. Look, she can't do everything. I know. She better not do everything. She just does a lot of things really well that uh, synergize really well with the rest of water. Um, and then, like, this, yeah, this version over here, the dog, um, the dog, rat, and uh, moon rabbit one has trouble with uh, the um, fedial phase in particular. Because not having an, a, a way to get rid of um, of Zombied is really annoying. <laughs> anyway. So that is the, uh, the three new characters that came out with the new year. Uh, all excellent. And then, you know, just as a little minor bonus, we happen to have the annual this is a really good summon that you can't uh spark for so come come at us that side games releases every december 31st yep uh you can share a ticket it but uh you know 150 moons yeah yeah anyways so here's so the way that uh triple zero is written the way that i understand it is that it's basically mega bubs and instead of like enhancing um, one turn, you you this is like the longer version of Bubs. So here's Einsofar, the first call. That's the Sandalfon version. And when you call it, your MC gets instant CA standby, so you get a hundred meter there instead of uh, Bubs, who encourages you to hit a bunch of skills and then triple attack. You get CA reactivate also. You get Five different elements of um, damage. Yep, because the dark's on the other side. Yep. Uh, but you have to have 12 Wings of Promise before you can summon them at all. So how do you get Wings of Promise? Well, the first way, just like it's how it's bubs, is you um, have it as your main summon. Because that way you just start at 12 Wings of Promise, just like uh, 3 Trance for Beelzebub. Or, as a sub thing, your MC, using a skill, gets 2 out of the 12, and then the CA also gets you 2 out of the 12. So, 4 skill, like your MC will by default have 4 skills, You've, it's 4 skills and 2 CAs, or something like that. Some Some combination of 6. And then, once that's there, you'll get to amplify all allies' damage dealt. Is it a 10% for everything? 10% on Seraphic yeah. Modifier. Yeah. Uh, other than that, also, MC gets uh, attack and defense based on their uh, the number of wing, uh, feathers they have, or wings. Uh, what it ends up being, at 4-star, it's 3% for, uh, for, uh, on perpetuity, so 36. and 5% defense. 36-60. The 60% defense is huge. On your summon slot. All right, so that's triple zero when you. I like I like this note. 
Uh, mm-hmm. at, it stacks additively with Grand Order Four Star. <laughs> that is important. There were some things that didn't. Um, like Draconic doesn't stack with her it, I believe, so, something like that. Anyway, so then once you once you've called Sandalfon, then Lucilius comes out, and here's Paradise Lost. Here's the dark damage part, and it does the following things. Um, y- you de- uh, you dispel all instead of dispel three like Beelzebub. It ca- it does the Seaphon cancel an omen if it's cancelable, but this only does it the first time. Called. Yeah. Uh, it ignores elemental resistance. It always counts as superior element, and then it switches back. Wait, does the aura switch? Let's see. The, the aura the aura switches. The thing is that the aura is the same. The aura is the same, but it just refers to the name Wings of Apocalypse instead of Wings of Promise. After that, Correct. I understand. So they do it just so it continues working. And then next time you can iron soul power. Yeah. Um, when this thing came out, it was bugged so that the um, each hit of the uh, of damage didn't get a normal cap. So people were doing just the damage cap on each hit. It's like, okay. <laughs> they were like, uh, that one was a mistake. We need to reinstate the damage cap on this one because it's not working. And within hours, it was fixed. And, and uh, you could still do a fu- funny zero button one seven call. You just need a lot more work for that one. You need a lot of work. I've seen what it takes in wind to get to um, the 24 million mark, which is the magical EX plus number. Uh, you have to have, it was like, Sutera, Neon a level 150, you need like every source of amp in the book, and skill cap, and... Like, well, Sutera's a uh, passive cap. Uh, she's supplement, actually. Sorry. There, It, it took a lot. Um, and the thing was that the last time we heard from Psy Games about what they were doing with EX+, Plus, they were like, we are not doing it yet. It'll come. And so I figure we're going to have like a two to three month break from Unite yeah, Fight after March. this one. So, yeah, see you in March or April. It's always wind. It's always wind that does it. <laughs> Last time it was safe on the, the other time it was safe on swords. Yeah. Now it's safe on elements. <laughs> um. But yeah, if they add one million, then uh, to eight ex plus HP, then this won't work for it anymore. Yeah, it barely hits. It hits it if I remember correctly. Yeah. But yeah, um, this thing is you know predictably extremely good i i just like the thought of like the, the enemy just gets caught up in the in the crossfire uh, 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 in triple zero yeah like sandalfon is shooting ein Sofar not at the enemy but at lucilius and lucilius gets out of the way and it hits the, uh, the what you're actually fighting yeah it's so funny <laughs> and then just paradise lost hits everybody it's just that sandalfon's like protecting you in particular yeah. Thanks, Sandy. Um, what if you do have the privilege of having this thing? Um, two of the most annoying uh, omens in the game get a lot easier, uh, which is the hexa the hexa uh, chromatic hierarchs uh, fifteen hits of two million because this is five of them. Or you know it just or you can just, just, just cancel it breaks it. it. Yeah, <laughs> you can just break it if you wish. Um, and then. Uh, the other thing that it makes way easier is the multi-element uh, break on Agastia, which, I mean, it does uh, enough damage. I, the, it yeah, does the three-element one at the beginning of the fight, which is yeah, something that's you, very important. That's the only one it does, because you'll, you're the you're missing, missing element is dark, and you can't, unless you're playing... A, uh... What you can do is that non-elemental actually counts as an element for the purposes of that one. That's kind of funny. Yeah, so that's why Beelzebub works, by the way, is that the non-elemental hit counts as an additional um, an additional uh, element. So uh, uh, My favorite element, null. Yeah. But it's like, um, unlike Cosmos, who is affected by the 
initial shield by enough that I can't break through it. Triple zero actually does! Yay! I still don't like Agastia that much, but it got easier. So no, you know, no one hates, no one likes Agastia. <laughs> All I, right, I could solve, I could solve that fight. I hate this fight. All right, moving on. Uh, we got evokers to talk about. Um, do you want to get straight to the fire one? Or do you want to go to the wind one first? Because we got can, our expert can, here. Can, can I go to the part where why does Frau need uh, require uh, another requirement for skill four? Let's see here. Let's just series evokers. Uh, yeah. Like, looking... like, why do I need? Why do I need uh, have at least maximum uh, fifty percent maximum of my maximum HP? There is a uh, a definite like Tetris piece here. Of um, hold on. Let's just order it by element. There. Let's see if it's a Tetris piece. So here's Esta, the Lobelia there. It actually, oh, Frau breaks it. It's almost a Tetris piece of uh, the ones that they, that are probably in line for being updated to be in line with the other six. <laughs> because I can't wait for three more years. The start. We got a Stariola whose fourth skill just lets you actually see a, which it's is CA. It doesn't, but you know, it's a Stariola, so it doesn't do anything. It just exists. Um, we got Maria Teresa, whose skill four I do use. Uh, the damage mitigation to allies is actually pretty, uh, pretty clutch. It's usable. Frows I've only used in easier content, just because. Whenever you can't she... use that in harder content. She'll die. <laughs> well, I uh, I have seen it go off in Seafon. But she always comes out at the end of Seafon when I took 77,777 uh, damage, so she can't cast it until she's in Dominus like three times. And, uh, you know, she needs a CA in order to get her Dominus back. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, why do I have a, why do I have a high requirement again? Lobelia's, we said that it's like, we didn't, he didn't need this, but... <laughs> it's it's fine, but it's, it's fine, he doesn't but... need, he need it. Yeah. So those are those are the four who are, uh, now get to look sad now that we know what all ten of them do. And uh, the power balance is uh, noticeable. So we'll start with Katsalia. So here's Katsalia. Um, the update he gets. So number one, his CA gets he to... 15% meter. And... Before you get to the rest of that, you're like, why? And then you get to the rest of it, and you go, oh. And you get CL4, and you understand why. Yeah. So then um, he gets the performance of the judge over here. Performance of the judge does the critical thing of first movement bide no longer consumes meter. And then he got a quality of life update that it, um, the passing of turns and being on full auto no longer turns off first movement bide. Which is a huge quality of life upgrade here. Um, so let me. It's been a long time since I looked at the numbers on the defensive uh, first move, but I know that it's huge. All right. So defense is 100% defense, 50% mm -hmm. DA, 20% TA. Okay. Uh, consumes 30 meter, 30% uh, meter each turn, but that doesn't mean anything when because it stops. line D happens. Yeah. And then. Uh, also, you gain, also your wind allies uh, heal for a thousand, yep. um, and uh, you get a uh, ten percent sackle wind attack up to fifty percent at the start of attack phase. Mm -hmm. But really, it's the the important thing is you can have refrain of biting, aka first movement bite over here, and it no longer consumes thirty percent of your charge meter every turn. And the the original design, it was like, oh yeah, it would be fine as long as uh, because it's healing you for that meter use. And it's like, no, no, I don't want that. I would rather just be able to use my meter. Thank you. And so yeah, they took that away. They they, they just took away that requirement. Um, they uh, when he hits ninety five, judgment reversed, changes from refresh to revitalize. I don't know how much that matters. It's, it's uh... nice. It, it does matter in the case of if you're not getting hard, hit hard enough that you actually just get eh, get more meter. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, you need to over, overflow your meter in order to activate skill 4. 
and then the other thing is that uh, oh yeah, it, and, uh, revitalized and, uh, specific, right. yeah, it goes, it goes from three fifty to to one thousand. That's fair. Uh, the other thing is that yeah, uplift specifically doesn't uh, uh, activate the uh, final movement ascension. Uplift well, and revitalize well, don't do well, it. Well, this is when he sub ally, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, this part doesn't fair. matter. Right. But you uh, you know, getting it closer. Yeah. Uh, when and then that's when you're not debuffed. When you are debuffed, he increases defense along with attack now. And that's actually pretty big if you're playing him sub. <laughs> because when you're debuffed, as long as you're not, you know, doing stupid Belial things, or you're not playing with Grand Ewiar, who also does that, come to think of it, like, that's when you're vulnerable. That's when you want defense up. So, you know, that's nice. And then Emperor Upright, the new thing that comes in with that one, uh, he gives everybody 50% meter, which is going get, to get him real close to full. And if that didn't get him to full... Then you hit this button, which does get him to full, basically, because that's a plus 30. And it happens to full auto. Yeah. And uh, you know what? Uh, you would wish that skill 4 uh, went first. But if you're bringing him in, uh, then you're fine with this. So here's, full mo uh, here's Final Movement Ascension. It gives him a permanent buff. Can't be recast. And whenever any effect says boost to charge bar, on that uh, happens to at least one character with maximum charge bar so hitting um third second movement overwhelm on an entire team with full meter only does it once as far as i understand it it is it only it only triggers once per action that causes charge bar to go plus yeah then he does a big old nuke uh 1.16 is the uh, is the cap on normal yeah and then it does says the next two hits get amplified damage. So um, active skills that do this are usually six, and this one's only two because, well, they expect it to happen a lot. Like, you, you can actually trigger it multiple times in the, in the turn. Yeah. Um, like, there's, the, uh, there's his own meter up here. There's his own meter up on... Galgania March, so they want you to have him earlier in line in order for him to CA, and then that 15% boost to charge bars causes the nuke and the um, the amplify. And then, you know, we've been going through and, like, uh, our, our resident wind scientist has been just checking wind for characters that do this, like, multiple times on different instances, so it's like, Alea has a button that does it. Great. Uh, Alea also has a passive that does it. Uh, well, then, yeah, Alea also has the second or fourth ally, uh, position at passive that does it every turn. So that's one of them. Uh, the other one that he showed us was really funny, actually, <laughs> because it's also very practical. Where are you? Uh, going through character, Charlotta does it on, uh, on Noble Moon. Mm -hmm. And Noble Moon can be cast uh, twice on turn 10 later. Yeah. Aliza gets it on every single time she counters. Yeah, because they're they're kind of individual. Yeah. Five uh, percent. Yeah. Which is just really funny. Uh, Katura gets her update later, and uh, yeah. uh, Skull One exists. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna come back to this one at the end of the. Uh... Oh, that's right. She's not gun. She's spear. Uh, Summer Eustace can do it because he gives a hundred percent meter. Mm -hmm. Elior can do it on, on uh, wind speed and two hundred twenty-two meows. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that does it. Like any kind of Summer MC John. effect, any kind of MC effect that does uh, um, extra CA on meter, uh, extra meter on CA that way around. He says it's not at least it's can go intuition. That makes sense. Oh, it's Kengo with intuition. My thanks, uh, Reno. That makes more sense. Uh, when Lily can do it on he on the heel. Uh, Lich does it to herself. Uh, does it activate on normal charge gain from CA? No, it has to be an ability. No. It has to be. It can, it does not work on uh, regular CA gain. It has to be something that says boost two meter. It also doesn't work on uplift. It doesn't work on revitalize, and also doesn't work on the meter you would normally gain from normal attacking with full meter. You know who's pretty good at gaining meter? 
Randall. With his plus 20 on uh, Storm Heal or whatever it's called? 30. Oh, man. What a character. This guy's fun. <laughs> that dude's sick. Uh, Shinobu can also do it. Safe on skill 2. Yeah. And skill 3. Actually, no. no that's three, just standby. No, it's it's not plus 100. Yeah, you're right. It's just a standby. Uh, show has one for it on its show time. <laughs> There's just so much this works with. It's Friday. <laughs> normally, oh, or, uh, normally, or a Friday only, or both. Uh, uh, on herself, normally. On Friday, it's everybody. I don't think I have Ultimate Friday. <laughs> uh, when you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's she there's get, a long she thing. Get, she gives meter and crest. Reno says the funniest and most practical use I've found is Kaguya. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh yeah, I forgot. Your uh, Urius takes th uh 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 thirty percent meter if he removes a buff. <laughs> Urius has ardent blade. What is it? Uh, how do you get it on uh, Kaguya? Whenever the ally with heavenly winds uses a CA. Got it. Yeah, you know, that's that's a pretty good character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right now the um the very very stable wind team in hard mode. Like before, Katze was it was uh like Seifon, Grand Charlotta, and then your support of choice. It was like the current support, like in fashion support, was Kaguya because she does so much against debuffs. But, uh, yeah, right now we're experimenting to see which of those spots that uh, Katsalia can take. Yo, Contante does it on normal attack. <laughs> yeah, tuning seven. Nice. Yeah, there's so much to work with. Like, it is, it is a previously unexplored thing, so now we're going through and going, that works? It works! <laughs> yeah, Kengo MC with Kagi buff spams it, yeah. All right. Uh, anything oh, else we want to say I... about Katze? Other than, well, I'm just gonna say that his story's dope. I like it. But I, th I always thought that his and Hasalia's story was the best of the Evokers, anyway. So, um, like, now that this story is past, it's pretty interesting seeing what they want to do because they're just like, all right. Once you've gotten to the end of both of these sibling stories, then they can have a crossbait. And um, this has been a very good week for Harvin lovers because we have one new useless rich Harvin from the Tira event. We have um, a new Harvin from Hosalia and uh, Katsalia's story. And we have a new Harvin from Alanon's story. Yeah, speaking of Alanon. Yeah, let's... Um, the King is Back is the easy thing to say about this one. You don't know... You no longer need a stupid domain. I don't remember what the domain did. Let me go look at it. Random cuts to Alanon's skill cooldowns when MC uses He of the Sun CA. <sighs> Alright. Yeah, that that never happened. No one, No one ever has... Uh, yeah, well, you know, you no longer need it anyways. All right, so we're just gonna go straight to the part that matters here: Days of Redemption. So remember when we said it's like the easy thing they can do is make it so that uh, he casts um, skill two without requiring a hundred meter for everybody. Yeah, yeah, He'll they did drain it. Your hundred meter. He will still drain a hundred a hundred meter from your team even if they don't and have short it. you. Yeah, he'll still short you, but uh, for one turn, you get fl uh, a two-hit flurry. Um, you uh, still get the... Uh, you get a crit, so that it activates other things that he has. Is the crit 100% 20% or is it... 100% 20%. Yeah. And then... Is the elemental yeah. crit one. It's uh, a cooldown of 10 turns, and uh, there is... No real way in his own kit to reduce that, but like oh man, time to use the heat of the sun. Yeah. <laughs> or or not. Um, 
the only thing they did to his CA, like it, they didn't add an effect to it. They just said here, uh, it he does it twice if you have uh, his field up. And the other thing they did to him is down here, and it just says, all right, Sun Touch Paradise, his field. Its duration is uh, as long as its um, casting as, time now. Yeah. And it activates and when he comes in. Yep. Also, uh, you know what? Let's add more crit, crit supplemental. Yeah. And so, you know, that works great with two hit flurry. So it's a 50k supplemental. And it becomes 100k when you flurry. And then you add in the chaser stuff because, you know, it's it's a... Uh, 200k when you just uh, deal with only his own chaser from hitting Renati and Creed before you take into account anything else. Yeah. Um, yeah, one of the combos I actually see is actually Orchid in the four slots. Give, gives your entire team to chaser, then you death her with the uh using uh, Yatima mm -hmm. and uh, double striking. That's yeah. Really um, the other old, uh, the older tech is to uh, kill near in that spot, so that she provides all the defense down you'll ever need uh, for for that. And then, yeah. So because you can I hit know, this, I, oh, you ahead. don't really need the defense down because you know Sun Touch Paradise does it well enough already. Yeah, this is true. It's, 20, it's away twenty five percent. Mm -hmm. But you know, near will get it to the full fifty. Uh, yeah, but you, you, you also just hit Wrath of the Goddess. Yeah, also true. Here we go. Some people, uh, you know, just want to hit as few buttons as possible because uh, he, like I said, the the king is back. He's back to being like the fewest turns for the most damage. Because with this one turn of flurry and all of these other effects that he has, your team just trucks. And then you know. This being Grand Blue Fantasy we talk about, you bring friend Keelan and you hit do it again. Grand uh, Keelan was used to be really bad with uh, Renati and Creed over here because you had to do so many, you had to jump through so many hoops to get back to a hundred meter on everybody. Well, so now you just hit Days of well, Redemption the second time. You know, he also, you know, didn't have the way to build meter unless you you cleared it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's a uh, really good, really short, good short burst. Uh, he has ways. Uh, sound reverse for our reason is is still super good for long term fights, mm -hmm. yeah, especially if they defense now. you. Yeah. Is it a permanent defense up that you get from it, or no? <laughs> it's attack defense up can't be removed. Okay. Yes. So as long as you take a dot, you get that. Mm hmm. And you know, in like, uh, Super Baja, you can't help but take a dot. We'll see what happens with uh, Lucy V2. But, you know, this is one of those things that just keeps happening. This is a very common uh, tool for them to have in order to provide, to basically knock off a lot of the uh, effects that say, stop uh, if you take damage, this fall off. It's like, yeah. Yeah, this will happen. But, yeah, like, fire soldiers are coming back out of the... Uh, um, the woodwork, like uh, fire luchadors are coming back. Everybody's back, going, "Oh yeah, I've been an Allen on main since third strike." I don't think there's much else to say about this one, is there? Uh, one of the nice, uh, of the nice things is that Blessed Radiance goes up from fifty percent defense to a hundred percent defense. Mm -hmm. That's so... that's kind of wild. It's the same. It basically puts him on the same level as Fediel because it's the whole like twenty five percent defense down from the the field, and a hundred percent defense up from the um the buff. So, yeah, like fire burst is uh pretty big, pretty big. Yeah, the difference is that you don't need to, you don't need to keep the character alive. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like and in fact, the field will eventually disappear. If he dies. Yeah. It'll go away eventually. Although it's 12 turns instead of 8 now. So, you know, it's quite long. You know, but being able to crit, eh, crit them's nice. You just have to remember that they can crit you now. Right. But yeah, be, the whole off-element crit thing, too. Uh, 
you know, sometimes you just you just blow up, and sometimes you just accept it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, the ideal thing at this point. So we heard at um, Grand Blue Fantasy Fest, and remember that the 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 keywords here are in an ideal world. In an ideal world, the evokers don't have that big of a power gap between them. Uh, and then they How each much? have their own. They each have their own niches to fill, right? Um, and so, in the ideal world here, like we go over to evokers, it's like Alanon, King of Burst. Okay, great. So, by the um, logic of that, Frau probably should have a little bit more control and sustain. Like her nightmare debuff is actually very good. Uh, her ability to dispel um, repeatedly, pretty damn good. And remove debuffs and stuff like that. It's just that, yeah, she's held back by this being so restrictive, Splendor. It's, but, it doesn't need to be. It yeah. really doesn't. It's like you go over to water, Hosselia, um It is queen. She's one of the two best. Um, and then, like, one of the things that Maria Teresa, like, Maria Teresa is very quietly very good. Um, she's. Uh, the Uguale Fidelta combo is still extremely good in anything that can really threaten you. I still use this combo a lot. Um, but like having a more having more reliable access to Harvest Shield would probably help her out with the uh, mitigation option being like the, the the mitigation side of the water the water duo over here, you know. Um. I think Lobelia is still good. I'm not going to talk about this one. I think Earth still has two of the best evokers. Lobelia, he turns, he, he lowers your cooldowns. How can he never be bad? Yeah, How exactly. Can he never be bad. It's like what? And I think I think the wind ones are still pretty well balanced against each other, because Esta is just like both of these characters can kind of hold your hand in different ways uh, in long fights. Like, Astariola is about heals and dispels, and Katsuli is about, like, defense and meter, and, yeah. I think I think these are pretty well balanced against each other. And then Light and Dark don't have second uh, evokers. But I think I think that both guys in Borger and Nier are in very good places relative to the rest of the, those, that cast. Guys yeah, in Borger's change is that he does more damage. <laughs> it's sick! He does so much damage! And if you use them as a backline passive, that's also fine. He gives them more damage too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think I think the major imbalance right now is for the the two fire and the two water, and hopefully why, they address why I'm that. Not surprised this happens always. What fire and water? Yeah. Well, fire for Eternals only has one. Water for water though. Yeah, for Eternals, that there's been that imbalance there for quite a while. Like, people were memeing that uh, Andre over here, he was the first character with Fleeting Spark to have um, Sharp Boost to full, Attack for full, a full, full turn. turn. And then yeah. they, just, they just give it to everything else now. Yeah, so they're like, oh, this is safe to put in the game. And so they've started doing it more and more. And so it's like, yeah, he probably could use an update to 2024 levels. Not He doesn't need to be the top or anything, but, you know, he could use that. Um... Speaking of which, so there's a very mysterious update coming in a few hours. Uh, it's mysterious not because we don't know what it, uh, like, uh, what it is. It's mysterious because we don't know what it means for the long term. Like, there's uh, it's the side so of update. things to come. So we have, hold on, let's go to Unite and Fight preview. Uh, updates to features. So as of the new Unite and Fight, we're going to add in a new series of weapons, the Celestial series. And right now, we're only going to start with two of them. And it's going to be um, the Gateway Star Sword, a Wind Sword, and the Fantasia Realm Harp, a Wind Harp. Uh, Apparently... Oh, go ahead. So that, that aligns with the Voker... Not Vokers. Eternal. the Eternals that it goes with. Mm-hmm. And so this is the start of something that they're going, they're warning us about, because it's a new weapon series. 
it's related to the Eternals somehow. Um, there's a new box currency. They're called crystallized cores. Um, and so 15 of those things will trade for one of these weapons, and they can also drop in Nightmare or from the ra final rally. And how do you get crystallized cores? So their way to keep people playing Unite and Fight, there's a new item. There's the Chest of Good Fortune. And the Chest of Good Fortune maxes out at 50 of them dropped in a single Unite and Fight. We don't know what the drop rate is like. Uh, we do know that... I hope it's not abysmal. I'm pretty sure it's going to be good at 50. Uh, but it's host only for levels 95 and 100. And then for levels 150 and 200, the ones that you can only do in crew, anybody can get them. You will also have them in beginner's mission loot, so we'll have to look and see how many of them are available there for doing the easy stuff that everyone can do. There's always a crystallized core in there. So with no other drops, you will get 50 crystallized cores if you focus on it. And that trades for three of these weapons. And then in there, you know, it's basically like a gift at this at that point. There's a chance of sand... You got things like Awakening Orbs, Rings, Books, you know, all of the stuff that you expect from, like, a bonus from Star Premium Draw or from a Silver Gift. Um, I, I will just get really sad if I keep getting the, the book. <laughs> the Copper Book over there. Yeah, two books. It's like, why? Why is it copper? two Copper Books? I'll, I'll, I will get sad, and it's going to happen. I mean, there's 50 of these things. It's going to happen, for sure. And we'll see. We'll see what this leads into. Because uh, some people pointed out that English, at least, these match up with the names of the Weapons of Eternal Splendor. By Japanese? I don't think they do. Uh, I don't know, because I can't see them. I don't have the blue, uh, the blue outfit. So... Uh, I would have to look up what they look like in, uh, hold on, let's go on to it's wiki. It's on wiki. Yeah, Gateway Star Sword. Do, 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 do. do they match up? Where is it on uh, wiki gateway? There it is. Oh. It doesn't have a. It doesn't have an actual uh, entry for them. I don't know what the Japanese for it is. But that's those are the transcendence uh, items. Oh, is that it? But these are the things that we're getting are weapons. Yeah. So I was mistaken. It is not the weapon of eternal splendor. It is the whatever item you use to transcend them. So they don't have descriptions that uh, we would have. Let's see here. So I would have to see the entire process in Japanese to understand my B. It's the transcendent uh, uncap item. But uh, anyway, we don't know. We don't know what they do. We just know that this is something that they're setting up for the long term. You know? Add, to, add on to the story. The gun's evil again. <laughs> Meanwhile, the sword's just like, yeah, so, uh, bro, can you, like, please, bro, bro, can you, please? Yeah, and that's the story of Seifon. <laughs> and Seifon's like, nah. Ah, <laughs> uh, the dagger's also evil. <laughs> anyway. That one doesn't surprise me. It, it belongs to Stabby Man. The axe is uh, not evil or good, it's just axe. It's okay. It's, it's it belongs to a dummy, anyways. <laughs> what if I got possessed as a joke? Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, but yeah, uh, we'll see what these lead to. We'll talk about them next week about what they actually do. But they may not show their hand for another couple United fights. This is just one of those things for people like me who have no use for New World Quartz anymore. As of as of today. Um, I essentially have no more use for uh, New World Quartz because I have all the New World Foundation weapons maxed, I have all the uh, ev evokers with their skill 4, so I'm going to take a nice long break from Arcarum, 
which I honestly have already done because the world came out. It's not the weapons of eternal splendor. Uh, what was I looking at? I was looking at New World Foundation. Yeah, I'm done. It's nice. It feels good. <laughs> but uh, you know, so they're seeding they're seeding us for something uh, out there. The the super mega transcendence for Eternals. I don't know. Maybe there will be sub Eternals, Eternal Disciples. Whatever it is, we'll find out. The only thing that we know about uh, as of the um, anniversary we'll find is out that, an anniversary. <laughs> yeah, we'll probably find out an anniversary. I hope we find out an anniversary. All we all we got a hint at from Fest was that there are going to be Rise of the Beasts characters, and I don't figure that Rise of the Beasts characters will be related at all to these uh, celestial weapons. I don't think so either. However, remember we have many different possibilities that we can go through. Yeah, uh, there's a. Uh, comment in chat it's like maybe eternal style swap and it's like well style swap only exists for one character so far yeah but the thing is that the, with the example that we got and this was a question at fest also is that um with the harvin evokers and also with kaim um there was enough of a change in them as characters that the writers were like we want to write new stuff for them and so there's a new Hosselia and Katsalia um, fate episode between the two of them that takes care of their, you know, post-resolution um, character growth and how they go talk to each other. Um, there's new lines for Kaim now because he's a different person than he was when we started. Hosselia got the same thing. Oh man, I can't wait for not true. Oh, Felix. <laughs> yeah and so it's like the thing is that they've met, so fukuhara was talking about this where it's like since it's hard to release a new version to them that uh to these characters um they sh they kind of need something else because there's like well they did fantasy seifon over here uh people call him seifont uh, or say a don't or whatever they call him um we had like the um seeds of redemption version of six and you know these are these are two of the most popular eternals period but it's like they they want to just keep working on these stories cuz people invested so much into making these characters and it's like yeah let's continue like we've got two of these coming to uh relink we already have two of them in versus we're probably do you think we're going to get more of them in versus no. That's fair. And if we do, it better be Seophon. <laughs> they already have the model. It's there. It's waiting. Yeah. It's been there since since uh, season Vanilla. two. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. He'll just, you know, he'll go into boundary and and uh, grab the versus from Valile. I'll know. <laughs> we'll see, but yeah, like the um, they they want to do more with these characters, and they know that they should do more with these characters because they're popular, and you know, people invested a huge amount of resources into doing this stuff. Um, maybe maybe we'll get the we'll we'll fight Walfried. We'll find out. I'm looking forward know, to that, this. That, that happened. Yeah, because there's there's another stage coming. We'll see what it is. And with that, I think we're done for this week. There's this ended up being a long episode. We we knew it was going to be long. Did but... I? I didn't get the agenda until one minute before. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was there the entire time. I just didn't hit enter. I hate when I do this. <laughs> I've done it like at least six times now. So anyway. Uh, thanks for letting me kidnap you, DJ. I hope that you managed to eat something. I have food. There's okay. a lot of food left over still from New Year's. <laughs> okay, good. Um, but yeah, like this is this is this is the, one of the fun times in Grand Blue Fantasy. We don't. It's a new year coming. A whole bunch of possibilities are opening up ahead of us. You know, we got dinosaurs. We got dinosaurs. Cool. <laughs> we got a bunch of dinosaurs on the ship, and we got like. A super cool character who 
Uh, did you, did you take your time and read Tira's Fates, by the way? I have not. I have not, not had time to do anything. So it's the the basic structure of it. So the um, the titles of it are like, "Are you a dinosaur?" And it basically reads like a uh, a riff on "Are you my mother?" Because she just walks up to like various uh, creatures from Grand Blue Fantasy's past and goes. I've heard this was a dinosaur. And it's like, nope, I'm not a dinosaur, but I know something's kind of like a dinosaur. And they bring you to the next thing. And so you get Amazing. some you get some pretty fun uh like appear it's not even cameos, they're appearances from old characters. And then it ends on a really cool note. I hope the Pina appears. We don't get back to the Pina, I'm sorry. We oh. get to things that are uh that are that are dinosaur like in appearance. Or at least in man, uh, demeanor. Oh, I haven't seen Drudge in forever. Right? I thought he was dead. <laughs> After what's, uh, what happened with Stan? Yeah, I re- honestly thought that Drudge was just dead. But apparently he's not. That was 2016. It's been eight years, man. <laughs> it's been eight years! <laughs> and then the, the, the one a- after Drudge is like, Oh, alright, I'm going to bring you to an old friend of mine. And he brings you to an old friend. It's like, oh, hey, I was expecting to see you again. Isn't Gachapin a dinosaur? Yes, Gachapin is a baby dinosaur. Our Gachapin has been re- rewritten outside of out of Grand Blue Fantasy after trying after saving everybody. <laughs> oh, I remember love that, that, that entire event was was Gachapin saves the world. Uh Gachapin did so uh, so much work. Good job, Gachapin. <laughs> Thank you for mountain climbing and wind sailing and <laughs> skateboarding. I think was also one of the things he did in that event. Uh, was it surfing or skydiving or gliding or something? I can't remember. There's a lot. Anyway. Anyway, anyway. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, we'll see you next time, because this time next week, we'll be on the tail end of Unite and Fight. We'll be coming out the other uh, other side. Um, we'll probably cover the, uh, um, like, we'll pick like two or three EMP skills that were released at the end of December that actually matter. But well, that means we have to go through all of them anyways. Eh. We can, yeah, I because can, we have, to, we have, to, have to comb through it. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's fair. That's fair. But we can try and just one sentence dismiss a lot of these. It's like, oh, look, it's one turn cut to skill cooldowns on a ta- normal attack sometimes. You never rely on this, so bye. <laughs> hey, hey, when Kluvaton shoots that arrow twice, it's great. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs>